Hi Gary, how are oh, you? Hey, I'm good, how are you? Gary Robinson from Acura USA. So we're here in a beautiful Napa Valley. This time of the year, especially the weather is so fantastic. Yeah, it's I mean, perfect. Although you maybe cannot... some rain coming, but beautiful today. Well, they need some rain. That's right. That is true. <laughs> they always need some rain here in California. So we're in the new uh, 2016 uh, Acura ILX, and uh, this is a mid-cycle refresh for the car. Why That's did right. you have to do it uh, so quickly? Because the car came out in 2012, 2000, right? uh, Yeah, 2012 as a 2013 model. You know, it's um, when we launched this car, it was uh, it was at a time when people were very focused on gas prices, on, 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 on car prices, um, because it was, you know, kind of the end of the recession. But it became clear to us right away that um, there was a real opportunity to add a little bit more luxury and a little bit more performance to this car. And so uh, that was the real focus was with this thing was to, was to add that, get it out there, and, and you know we've had a lot of success with the car, got a lot of young buyers, but but we think that there's a lot more room in this, yeah. in this segment. So the the big changes for this uh, yeah. for this model are like uh, cosmetic, obviously a lot of uh, the new front, the new lights, right. and all that. But mainly the engine because the yeah. previous engine had 150 horsepower. That's right. Yeah. But a lot of people consider it wasn't enough. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, and um, yes, yeah, so by far. Are the biggest change on the car um, not not looking at it but but as soon as you drive it is is the engine so this is the engine out of the uh, out of the TLX so yeah. the TLX just launched 2.4 liter direct injected engine with a with a dual clutch transmission and it, it's a great engine just a four cylinder but really powerful really quick shifts good acceleration especially with this car being a little bit lighter than the TLX it's a perfect match a lot of fun and also a lot of uh, new technologies that, that I yep. mean, the, the auto industry is like moving so fast, like oh, it's you have to make a refresh uh, half cycle into the, into the life of the car. Yeah. But that actually, uh, it's a good thing because it allows you to upgrade yep. some other things, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah, and we, we recently introduced a, a lot of um, new safety technology and, and things that are, um, I mean, you know, just a few years ago, you'd have to buy, get in cars that cost $100,000. Well, now they're available in something like this, that, that's a $30,000 car. Um, so a lot of safety features, um, crash mitigation, things that help you keep in your lane, uh, advanced cruise control that, that can alter your speed based on the cars around you. Um, they really give the customer a much safer and a much more relaxing driving experience. Yeah. So um, I, I actually tested the lane departure thing and it's yeah. really, really good. Right, let's see yeah. if we can do it now here. <laughs> I mean, uh, there you go. I mean, like it kicks you into the to the lane. It's pretty, pretty yeah. amazing, and, and not in a very intrusive way. Right. Because some other systems like beeps and like give you alarms and like right, right. the seat the seat vibrates and all that, and it's kind of too much sometimes, right? Yeah. This one just like push it out very very softly and like in a very let's say elegant way, like telling right. like pay attention. Right. No, exactly. And then I mean, all of our we've always taken that approach. Try to not have too many things that 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 interfere with the driver we want to help the driver yeah um, and obviously give the ability if they don't want it they turn it off and they don't they just drive completely on their own if they, if they choose to but yeah and so hopefully that is I'm glad you've experienced that that, that was the goal so what are we talking about uh, price in this car you said uh, yep. this is the entry level for uh, for Acura so what, right. what are you talking about prices here? so the, the lowest price one uh, the, the the entry version of the ILX is 27,900 and if you go all the way to the top um, you're still under 35 grand so that I think the the, the most expensive one is just under 34 and a half. Yeah. So it's a great deal. And I mean, you, you think about the fact that, that the Audi A3 is, is, is probably one of our biggest competitors. Well, you know, they've, they've advertised their 29.9 base price. Well, for us, for 29.9. Yeah, you cannot find it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you can't find that car. And for us, for 29.9, you're getting a car that's loaded. Well, and then for 27.9, you're yeah. getting a great car. So. Um, so we think you got actually a really, a really good uh, story there. A very interesting uh, segment. I, I'm not gonna say like this, the actual segment of the what is it like compact luxury car, but like actually the price range. Right. Because the regular cars like Civics, Hondas, uh, Honda Accord, Camrys are more or less in that range. Sure. But then it has changed a lot in terms that you're getting a lot of of uh, stuff in cars. So the the gap between non-luxury car and luxury car is like this big now. No? Yep, that's true. It's true. But you know, it's funny though because we, I mean, we know that, right? And and like for instance, an Accord. I mean, there, there's a lot of overlap with the prices the prices on this car and an Accord. But somehow they just tend to be very different buyers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and people are either luxury cars, and, and the guy who wants an Accord can't understand why somebody would want a smaller car with an Acura badge on it, and the guy who wants the Acura can't understand Absolutely, why yeah. why somebody would would buy a big Honda. And you know, it's it's just a different person, and it seems to work out quite well. So Acura is doing a pretty good, like right in the last uh, three years you've been uh, in 
increasing your sales and yep. like with the addition of this or the refresh of this I mean it's gonna be a very good year with yeah. this car but also with another car that is coming up right that's right <laughs> <laughs> yes can't talk about it yet but yeah definitely well, no, the NSX. Oh, the NSX. Talk, oh, well, you're the gonna, NSX is gonna. Maybe be great. you can talk if you no, already no, no, ordered no, one for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, the NSX. I mean, we're 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 really excited about it. It's you know somebody somebody asked me about it. Well, you know, it's gonna be over 150 grand. What does it have to do with the rest of your showroom? And, and for us, even though that seems like a stretch, it has everything to do with the rest of our showroom because that car represents the best of what we have to yeah. offer. It, it it makes our whole company more excited to to exist to, to produce cars. And so and so it's the, the technologies that you see there, um, not in exactly that form, but they're going to find their way throughout the lineup. And now you know, obviously, the front of this car and the front of that car don't look the, so different. The lights, yeah. Yep. The so, LED lights. Yeah. So for our younger younger audience who don't remember what the NS is. Can you remind us a little bit like the history of that car? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, the NSX was a, was a revolutionary car. I mean, it came out the first model year in America was 1991. So it came out in the 1990 calendar year. And that was a time, and you know, I don't mean to talk badly about the Ferraris of the world, but the Ferraris of the world had, had, had kind of lost their way a little bit. They weren't that yeah. great. And so in a lot of ways, the NSX was credited um, and it came out and it was just a revolutionary car, aluminum construction, ultra lightweight, incredible handling. And it put the rest of the, the sports car world on notice. And, and I mean, frankly, everybody improved because of that car. And, and so it was a really significant car. You know, Ayrton Senna, famous race car driver, was part of the development. So it's just a great story for us. And so... Um, and what happened? I mean, why did it go away? Yeah, well, you know, it... Um, it went away, I think, just because it was it was designed to be a, a car that was it wasn't you know intended to be a new model. Oh, like a limited forever. production car. Exactly. Like some yeah. other manufacturers do with some cars. That's right. Yeah, they and do so, it for a few years and then they're like collecting yep. items, which that's exactly what happened. With that's it. exactly what happened. Yeah, and uh, but you know now. It, I think a few years ago we were kind of at a new new chapter in our company and we realized you know it's time for something like that again something something special and kind of a, makes a statement of who we are so that car the nsx has a lot of uh what we can call formula one technology like that's being right. a plug-in hybrid and like that's where like pretty much what the formula one cars are using now right that's right yeah, it's a v6 hybrid and, and and you know that's actually the same recipe for you know for for the last year for formula one and what they're going to Used for a little while, so yeah, it is. It is very uh, closely related in terms of the technology, and there's a lot of other parts of the car too. You know, the, some of the things that, that we've learned, um, not just you know from Formula One racing in the past, other kinds of racing, you know, find their way in that car, and, and vice versa. So, so uh, the full lineup uh, now for for Acura, what is it? ILX. So yeah, so so on the car side, starts with this ILX, TLX, RLX, um, and on the truck side, RDX and MDX, and then of course the NSX as sort of the halo over it all. And most of your cars now that you sell in the U.S. are made here in the U.S., right? That's right, yeah. Uh, more than 95%. It's um, it's uh, basically every car except for the RLX is, is made here. And uh, uh, mostly in Ohio and, and some in Alabama. And, and uh, yes, we're really proud of that, actually. And you just celebrated uh, 2 million uh, units produced in the U.S. or yes. sold in the U.S.? No, produced. Produced, wow. Uh, yeah, which is amazing. I can't believe, um, I can't believe we made that many uh, Acuras here. But yeah, that's right. So this car, again, going back a little bit to it, um, 2016 model, yep. started at 27,900. Uh, That's right, it? yes. And um, up to 35. So the main competition, you see like the A3? Yep, the Audi A3, A3. Yep, Mercedes CLA are probably the two obvious ones. You know, we get some competition from cars like the Lexus CT, even though that's a hybrid, but the pricing, you know, price position is, is, is kind of overlapped. Um, and you know, it's a funny class too, because because it's the, the, the lowest price luxury segment, there's some people that will, you know, be looking at mainstreams in, in these cars yeah. and, and a variety of other things too. But yeah, those are those are the A3 is the most obvious one. CLA uh, second, I would say for sure. Well, excellent. Uh, oh, by the way, we only have it in the manual transmission, or we have a, right. I mean, the, the automatic, automatic transmission. Yeah. Are we going to have the manual too? No, so we don't have the manual anymore. And and you know, a lot of those because I mean, hey, we didn't sell that many manuals, but um, but this this new transmission really has the best of both worlds, right? So going from six gears to eight gears. Faster shifts, Double better clutch. acceleration. Yeah, it's 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 just an amazing transmission. And so, um, I mean, I don't know if, if you feel this way, but for me, the the shifts with the paddle shifters are, are every bit as fun. And you know, my wife can drive it too. So it's so we were driving nice. in the regular mode, but we can shift it to sport, and right. then you can. Uh, it's an obvious change of and everything. Now we have an old Buick you know, yeah, right. from the 70s. But it's not allowing us to do anything here. Fun, but you can actually hear it. That's right. 
we're gonna try to lose this car here in front of us but anyway <laughs> so well thank you very much for your time uh, yeah. and spending uh, or having us here in uh, california driving this nice new car oh here we go now we can have some fun there you go <laughs> <laughs> so it's just interesting. I tweeted a picture of this car this morning, and yeah. a lot of people who are tuners and, and enthusiasts of that like really, really like it. Oh, good. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I mean, I used to be a tuner back in the day, and uh, yeah, I, I really want. I wanted a spec, white, yeah. white exterior, black interior. It's <laughs> perfect for me. So then play with it. Yep. Well, thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, um, gonna keep enjoying here the twisties in around <laughs> Napa Valley. Sounds good.